My shop is small and space is at a premium. Being space conscious led me to install my router onto a router lift plate and then recess it into the side extension table of my Delta Unisaw. Um, look, there are several ways to install a router lift plate into a tabletop. I chose to use a router, a template, and use filler strips for the entire process. This method I feel while it's a little bit slower than another method or different methods, it allows me to cut through, cut the rabbit and then cut through the tabletop with one router, one standard straight bit, and it gave me crisp, clean, uh, super nice cuts. The other method involves a router and a jigsaw, and the jigsaw is used to cut the center portion out of the table. While this method is certainly faster, it's, it's much less precise and you still need the router and the template. So the challenge with installing a router plate and cutting it into a tabletop is, is basically you want to make sure that that plate is flush. It fits perfect. No slop. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. We all want that perfect fit and we don't want to screw it up. So to do this, you need to use a router template. We've been using templates within woodworking and carpentry for years. They minimize tedious measurements and layout. And my plan was to create a template to first cut out my rabbit, where the, uh, which would support the router table insert, and then add spacer strips to move the router bit inward, and then cut out the center portion of the table so that I could drop in the router. The router would actually drop through the table and the plate would be flush. So before we do any of this, the first step is to acquire a router plate. You will need the plate in order to make a cutout template. So I sourced a Rockler ProLift router plate. The plate measures eight and a quarter inches by 11 and three quarter inches. Standard, pretty standard size. But what I really liked about it was it allows you to easily, quickly, and precisely adjust the height of the bit from the top of the table. It just has a crank mechanism. There are two methods to lift the router. So the crank mechanism fits either in one uh, gear, which is called a quick gear, and that moves the rudder up fast. That's for changing the bit. The other gear is a precision gear, and that's for dialing in kind of finer measurements. Um, <clears throat> placement of your router plate on your table, it's really personal preference, and there's a couple of things you want to consider. I chose to, route, uh, to mount my, my table plate closer to my side, to the user side, versus centering it on the table. And there was a couple of reasons why I did that. First of all, I wanted to give the material uh, more support on the material after it passed the router bit. And look, I know the arguments, you know, set up a material roller support or build an extension table. You know, I don't have that option. Um, and I didn't want that. I wanted a few more inches of tabletop for support. Secondly, I wanted the, to be able to, by keeping it close to me, I wanted to be able to maintain a strong, solid, balanced stance. And basically that ensures that I'm, I'm centered and I'm safe and I'm not reaching too far over the router bit. And lastly, I wanted to ensure that the router plate location didn't interfere with the normal operations of my table saw operation. And by placing it all the way to the right of the table versus center or maybe center of that table, I can now use my table saw to rip up to 38 inches before the router plate is impacted by the table saw fence. Um, you have to previously understand that before I did this, I used to have a drop-on um, fence that I would use, a router fence that I would drop onto my table saw fence, and it, would, it was a dual purpose. And it worked great, but the problem is when I was routing something, I tied up my table saw fence. And if I needed to rip an extra piece so I could route it or do whatever, I would have to break down my router fence, lower the bit, slide the table saw fence back over and use it. So I learned from my lessons and decided that I wanted a standalone fence separate from my table saw fence. Um, so let's, let's talk about fence considerations because that's important. Um, it's important to consider the router table fence you're gonna use and dust collection because routers make a mess. I installed a router, um, a router table fence from Rockler, and I liked it because it had a built-in dust hood and it came with some nice featherboard extensions and some things. Um, 
And since I was not centering my router plate in the middle of my table, I had to ensure that my router fence did not overhang the edge of the table because I didn't want to catch it on my hip or snag clothing or obviously make it a bump hazard. So once I had all that stuff figured out, I had to kind of dry fit everything, uh, and I had the perfect location, um, I used the rudder table of the table saw fence, basically I slid it over, locked it down, and I used that to square my rudder plate. Once I decided on the perfect spot for the rudder table lift plate, I used the table saw fence to align and keep the rudder plate square on the tabletop. And once I locked that fence down, I was able to square the plate, I used a pencil, and I basically just traced around the plate as a reference mark. This visual reference mark proved helpful throughout the entire installation. I constantly referred back to it. In order to find out what size to build your template, you first need to know the distance from your router bit, the edge of your router bit, to the edge of your plunge router base. So I, w I decided I was gonna use a three quarter router bit, straight bit, because it better matched the radius of my plate. I've got a couple different sizes here, and that was the better one. So the rudder bit measured three inches out to the edge of my Makita plunge rudder base. So what I did is I marked one spot of the rudder base plate in order to, to keep the rudder oriented correctly. And basically it's a witness mark, right? So I placed, uh, used a black marker and just placed a mark on the base plate, and I made sure that that line was in contact with my template on all four sides. I turned the rudder, keeping that line or that point in constant contact with my template. Making the template itself is pretty straightforward. I ripped four pieces of half inch plywood long enough to span across my table saw table uh, front to back and also side to side. And I placed, I placed my rudder lift plate right in between those trace lines or over the trace line outline that I drew. And in order for the rudder bit to cut in that proper location, right where I wanted that rabbit to be, I needed to space my template three inches away from the cut line. Now remember, the three inches is the distance from the edge of the router bit to the outside of my plunge router base. To stay, uh, to stay accurate, or to keep me honest, I ripped scrap plywood, basically spacer strips, three inches, and I placed them against the router plate on all four sides, and then I built my template around that, basically. Um, throughout this entire process, I kept referring to my trace outline for visual, visual reference. And I also used, I used my table saw fenced and locked down on one side as a fixed point, and I was able to push the template and parts against that. Uh, once everything was good, I screwed it all together. Um, I used smaller strips of, of half inch plywood to screw it together with screws and lock it in. I used at least two screws in every corner and then I locked in the center parts. While assembling the template, make sure that all those parts are snug and keep checking your reference outline. I used the table saw rip fence again over and over again as I, as I was doing this because it really does give you a great anchor point and it's a good place to measure from, it's a good place to to uh, push against and clamp down. Um, but once everything is good and you, you know, make sense and you're happy with it, clamp it down. You can move the fence out of the way. It might be in the way of your router, it might not be. Double check everything and check for square. And I keep double, uh, you know, I keep stressing double checking your template and your outline, but it's important. This tabletop is expensive. It's a two or $300 tabletop. I don't want to screw it up. Um, now, you gotta set your, your router bit to the exact depth, uh, or even th a 30 second deeper than the depth of your router plate if you have adjustments to, to level it. Um, once you're ready to go, you're ready to route out, you know, you need to remove your, your three inch spacers, you place your router into your template and you do a dry fit. Make sure the machine is turned off and unplugged and basically lower the bit and just ride along and look. Don't, you know, don't drag the bit, but look and make sure that your bit lines up with your traced lines on the inside of your traced lines. So the next step after this, guys, is to route out the rabbit where this plate is gonna sit on. You wanna make sure that you route in a clockwise fashion in all four directions. And remember, you're only cutting to the depth of your router plate. Now, once you do that, you wanna cut out the center 
pump point afterwards, right? So what I did is I added uh, half inch spacer strips to all four sides, and basically that moves my router bit in a half inch. It gives me a half inch rabbit on all four sides. I made sure I, I put these um, spacer strips in uh, snug, and while probably not needed, I added a couple of pin nails to ensure that it would stay in place. Um, basically, like I said, these half inch strips basically move the router in a half inch. And I was looking for that half inch wide route, uh, rabbit on all four sides to support the router lift plate. Once I had that in place, I proceeded to cut out the center section. Now, uh, the center section needs to be completely cut out because that's where the router drops down through. So I set my router first to a depth of about 3 eighths of an inch. I made a first pass and then 7, seven eighths of an inch. And again, I, by the way guys, um, I had dust collection set up because this makes a mess. You have to you have dust collection. So I did a test fit after I was done and I left the template in place just in case you need to adjust the rabbit depth and go deeper. One of the best ways to test the height once you have once you're dry fitting is just to use a scrap block of wood and slide it over the table and across the router plate. The sliding of the wood ba back and forth it's basically to ensure that the router plate and the table joint is flush in the same plane and it just helps determine that and you can do that on all four sides and you make adjustments as needed. You might have to route it, you might have to lift it. Um, once you're good to go, once, once that's it, you're ready to go. You're ready to mount your router to your router lift plate. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the router fence. After installing the router to my lift plate, dropping it into the table, it's time to mount a fence. So. Uh, my Rockler router table fence has these uh, cutout slots on the table for table mounting and sliding. So I basically centered my fence over my router collet, which was now in the table, and I used my table saw fence again, locked down to square it. And once it was square and everything was good to go and I liked where it was aligned, I just marked those slots on the table. And then I used a framing square and I just I, uh, I marked perpendicular lines and I routed two quarter inch by four inch slots going perpendicular to where the fence will go. And these slots will allow me to slide the fence up or out of the way for router bit removal, fence adjustments, and things like that. Guys, this has been a quick video on how I installed my router table lift plate. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not the only way to do this, but it's one way that I like. I really hope that it helps you guys out, or at least it gives you great ideas in the workshop. I'm Rob Robillard from ConcordCarpenter.com. Stay well.